Well, I finally broke down and bought me a little Harbor Freight bandsaw, a little vertical horizontal guy, and uh, got him all put together, uh, assembling it wasn't too bad at all. And so got it all set up and pretty much aligned out of the box. It looked like it was all right. And so I did my cuts. And so first cut did good. You can see it's nice and square. Uh, second cut did good. Third cut did good. Fourth cut did good. Got to the fifth cut and something happened. And I can tell you what happened, but you can see this was the first part of the cut. And then the second one, it sloped off sideways. So we are messed up. Well, what happened is in, in that cut, I heard this noise and uh, I'll zoom in and show you, but what it did was the saw blade actually jumped over the top of this upper bearing right here. And when it did, it went sideways and it jumped up inside of the two on here and it took all the teeth off one side. So it's all flat on one side. If I rub on it, this side still standing out this side smoothed down because it got caught up inside of there. So first deal didn't even make 10 cuts and I already jumped off the bearing. So we'll look as with Harbor Freight stuff, most time the heart of it's pretty good. I mean, the little machine looks like it's gonna last quite a while, but they messed up on some silly little thing like this right here. It ends up messing the whole thing up and would make somebody so pissed off if they didn't know what happened and what to do to fix it. So let me take that little guy off right there and we'll zoom in and see what went wrong. So it comes off pretty easy, it's just one bolt, which is another issue because this thing's supposed to slide up and down, but the slides are so loose, it's just ridiculous. And so I may have to fix that later by making like a bracket here and then I can put two screws in. But I'm not worried about that right now because it'll hold tight like it is until I can do something else. But let me show you what the issue is. So we'll get this off here and we'll zoom down here and see what that bearing looks like. All right, so what went wrong? Well, we can see right here, if I hold it up, you can see they put the bearing in there. This is the one that rides up on top of the band. And so it pushes down on it. And what they did, they just didn't put any spacers in there. And so this slides back and forth and as you can see, if you can see on the camera, there's little tiny marks where the band has been running against this bearing. And you can see there's a mark, there's a mark. And the band was scooting around while this roller was scooting back and forth. Finally, it scooted over so far that the band jumped off, went up here, and then all the teeth got caught in between and it flattened out the teeth on one side. So now everything cuts crooked. So, what we got to do to fix this is basically put some shims on the side of it, keep it from running off to the edge and letting the band jump up on top of it. So not too hard to fix. It's always something silly like that with the uh, Harbor Freight stuff is they make a pretty decent piece of equipment and then something silly like that messes everything up. So let's get set up over on the vise and we will put some shims in there and hopefully fix it. All right, so over on the vise, what we got to do, and probably someday I'll have to replace these bearings anyway. So uh, what I got to do is get that little pin out of there that holds that bearing in. So it doesn't look too difficult. I'm just going to take a bolt and put it on one side like that. And then just take something to put on the other side to push it into. So I'll just use a socket over here, get everything lined up, hopefully with our little fingers. What I'm going to do is just push that out of there. There we go. So, now we got our pin out, and out comes our bearing. So, all we need to do is get some shims on either side. So, I got some of these little retainers and so I'm just going to put a couple of retainers on it looks like it'll hold about three two on one side and one on the other and so I don't really care if it's dead center what I want to do is just keep it from getting all the way to the side so it looks like it has a tendency to run over here and so I'm going to put two on this side and one on that side so let's get it set up here and get us some little shims in there 
All right, so let's see if we can get this thing put together with some shims in it. And so this is the way it mounts and it looks like it wants to run on that side. And so what I'm gonna do is put one shim over on this side over here and then I'm gonna put two shims on top. So let's clamp him in there. Just gonna use a something to help me line things up. So let me get the shim in there and then let's put our bearing back. And then let's put a shim in there. We'll get something to poke that shim. And then one more shim on top. There we go. So now we just need to take our pin and drop him back down in there. There we go. So now we got shims over here and a shim on that side. And what that's going to do is keep that bearing from moving. And hopefully that's going to allow it to stay in the center because it wanted to run all the way over this way. And so now we got it shim back up. If there was room, you could put four in there and make it even, but there's only room for three. So hopefully that's gonna prevent that from popping out there. Now, all we gotta do is just pinch everything back together. So let's put that back on. Get our socket back in there. And pinch it all back up. So now we got it so that the bearing will stay in the middle. So all I got to do is do that for the other one and then we'll go through putting it back on there and lining everything back up. All right, so what I want to do to realign this uh, blade, now this is the bad blade, I'm going to have to take it off, but while it's on there I'll use it to square everything up, so I'm just going to use something flat that I can stand up here, so let's just use a square, and as you can see, if I hold that up to the blade, it's leaning out this way, so what I got to do is tilt this little guy that way in order to square that up. And these slides right here are just nasty loose, so you can't do much with them. Like I say, I can move it a bunch and try to get it squared up. So it looks like I'm going to have to be way over there to get it squared up. So let me just pull it over there and approximate for the first go and see how close we get it. So that's actually not too bad right there. That's probably straight enough. Maybe off just a little bit. So we still need to go just a hair more. So let me loosen it up and move it. Just a bit, 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 bit further. Like I say, with only one bolt there, it's never gonna be really, really good, but good enough. For what little cutting we do. There we go. So now we're pretty straight on that end. Now we've got to go to this end. And you can see that this one is way off. And so this whole thing has to get tilted over that way too. So let's loosen him up. Oh, and by the way, this thing is unplugged. So always remember when you're messing around with some of this stuff, unplug it. You never know something might happen and suddenly you'll lose a finger. So let me tilt that one all the way as far as I can tilt it. And just see where we are. So for that, yeah, we're actually pretty close. So that should be close enough that it ought to cut decently straight. And 
If we look at the straightness to the table, that looks pretty good. We can always re-square this plate if we need to, to square it back up to the saw blade. So let me just put a square on it and just see what it looks like. If we look at our blade to our table, eh, we're off a little bit. So maybe we need to move that table back. So let's get a wrench and square it up while we're doing. And right here we'll do our adjustment to square our little table up. And get a cut square. So let's loosen that up. And check to the blades. It looks like it's going to come that way a little bit. Pretty good. All right, so now we're all squared back up. And while we're over here, another thing that I notice is getting on my nerves. You can see the spring. This is the counterbalance spring, and so normally it stays up there. And when you close the lid down, it counterbalances the head weight. But what happens a lot of times is when you open it up, it gets to that side and the spring falls off. So sometimes it stays up, other times it falls out like that right there. And so this thing is just barely hanging up there. If this is tilted any kind of little witch away, then that spring will fall right out. So what we need to do is, since I'm too lazy to try to bend that around right there, I'm just going to take a piece of tube and I'm going to stick it on the end of that right there. And then I'm going to cut it off and I'm going to stick it up inside the spring. And that way it can't jump out of there and I didn't have to go to big massive amounts of trouble to bend that spring. We'll just put a little tube retainer on there to prevent that from popping out. So there we go. So now it can't jump out of there. And we got that annoyance fixed. Alright, so theoretically that's the only two things that I noticed out of my 10 cuts. But when it went up inside of the bearing right there, it just flattened out the band. And so now it just cuts off crooked. If you've ever tried to cut with a chainsaw that isn't sharp and straight, it does the very same thing. It doesn't lead straight down through there. So knowing what we know about Harbor Freight stuff, I went ahead and got another band because I figured either that one wasn't going to be any good because it came on it, or something like this is going to happen and it's going to tear it up out hanging in something or whatever. So anyway, so I got a replacement for it. So now all we got to do is just swap the bands out and we'll set it up, cut something else and see if we got it squared up again. So let's get set up here and change this band out real quick. All right. So if you've never changed a band out on one of these, it's not hard to do. It works like most every other one. You just got to take the guards off so you can get to it. And then this little guy slides up. You don't have to take him out. He just slides up. And then you open up the guard to expose it. So then there's two little bitty guards right here that have to get took off. They just loosen those up. Take that guard off. Take this guard off down here. And we'll just loosen the band up, and sometimes it'll fly out of there on its own. So we get it loosened up, and then you just tip it around, take it out, and there we go. So this one is toast, definitely smoothed out on one side, and no longer any good. So. That one goes in the trash. So let's replace it with a new band. So 
So these guys are pretty dangerous when they open up, they'll fly apart. So what I usually do is just throw them. <laughs> you heard it hit the ground that way. It doesn't try to bite me. And so when we put it on, we got to have our teeth going in the right direction. And so when it cuts, it's cutting this way, pulling around. So the way this one's lined up right now, it's cutting backwards. So if I put it on like this right here, the way the teeth are lined up, it's going to be going opposite. And so in order to get it the right direction, you have to flip it inside out. And then the teeth are going to be going in the right direction. And so now, when I put it on, the teeth are pointing downward. And there's a little picture on the side that tells you which way the teeth point because the thing pulls that way. So we can put our belt back on. All we do is just line him up in the rollers. Push him around the big ones. Hold him on there and tighten him back up. So now we got it going. So at this point we can plug it back in and just make sure that we got the teeth in the right direction. So let's plug him back in and bump him real quick. And the teeth are pointing down. So there we go. So now we got it all set up. Got us a new band. We're ready to set up and take us cut and see if now, with those fixes, this silly thing is going to cut straight again. So let's get moved back over and set up and we'll do a cut. Alright, so we're ready to make a test cut with the new blade and the little shims that are going to hold those bearings in place and everybody lined up and so we should be in good shape. This was a piece of wood that I tested just to see how bad it was cutting and so as you can see, it cut pretty crooked. If you can see to the square there, started at the top and then it just tapered on out. So hopefully with everything fixed and everything lined up, when we take this cut, it's gonna be nice and straight and it's gonna end up not bowing out like that with this new blade. So here we go. Back to cutting straight again. And we can see that we are not all very far at all. So looking a whole lot better than it was over here. And then we got our deck lined up pretty good. So looking a whole lot better now. I believe we're in much better shape. Well, alrighty, I think that's got us uh, fixed up pretty good on our little Harbor Freight uh, horizontal vertical band saw feller and uh, just had a few little problems to straighten out so we'll take off cutting some aluminum again now that we're squared back up on our test wood and uh, see how well it cuts.
All right, so after that cut, this is the factory cut from the metal, and then the nice shiny one is what this little guy did. So there is my line on top that I started the cut with. This was the side line that I cut all the way down. So if we measure the top now. We are at 1.725 and then 1.725. If we measure at the bottom, we are at 1.722. So not too bad with that alignment this way is kind of critical to keep it from walking a new blade and now we've got our bearings lined up in the middle so the band can't jump off of them and tear crap up and we're in pretty good shape now well alrighty well thanks for watching